Well, hello everybody and welcome again. Just thinking with myself, Charlie Ward. And I always try to encourage people on these shots and invariably that's always the case. But today I'm gonna to rock the boat just a little bit. I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna be sharing from God's word on laws and different things that have been happening to us in the last couple of years. Um, I'm going to start with 1 Corinthians in the New Testament in chapter 6. And if you can, listen very, very carefully to the list that I'm going to read out here and see if you can tick any of these boxes. Uh, I'll be surprised if you can't. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So there's quite a list there, isn't there? And I've actually written some of those down, if I can find it. Oh, here it is, just bear with me. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, and it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9, as we just read there. And the first word that jumps out there to me is deceived. And the warning, do not be deceived. And I suppose the first question is, have we been deceived? Number one, the people that will not inherit the kingdom of God is listed as such. The sexually immoral. Now, these are very, very broad terms. I mean, you could put down so many variations of each of these descriptions that you could, we could be here for hours. So let's just go through them briefly today. Sexually immoral, immoral is the first one that Paul mentions here addressing the Corinthians in his letter. Now then, then he goes on to idolaters. Idolatry, of course, is very frowned upon in God's word in the Bible. Uh, you shall not have any other gods before me. So idolatry could be anything. It could be whatever is number one in your life or my life could be considered an idol between ourselves and God. Again, very, very broad. Um, Adulterers. Adultery, again, Jesus often spoke about adultery and he said even to look at a woman is, if you like, the same as committing the offence of adultery with that woman. Adultery also, of course, is going off with uh, the partner of, of another uh, marriage. So adultery, again, huge, huge broad brush there on that one. But none of these people, according to Paul, will inherit the kingdom of God. Male prostitutes, again, we're coming into the whole area of sexuality again now. Uh, that's number four. Number five, homosexual offenders. Homosexual offenders will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, number six, thieves. Ever robbed anything? Ever stolen anything anywhere at any time in your life? Number seven, the greedy. Greedy people. You know, greed is all about selfishness and self-centeredness. Won't inherit the kingdom of God. Number eight, the drunkards. Now you might say that's, that's a lot of people out straight away and not uh, applicable for entry to the kingdom of God by any standards. Uh, number nine, swindlers. So I've got nine different issues here that I've written down from this letter. And none of those groups, according to Paul in his letter, will inherit the kingdom of God. Now you must remember at the end of this letter, the news is very, very good. Because he's talking to a people that used to be like that, but have now come into a new life. And this is what I want to talk about today, the new life. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says that if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. So let's go on to the end of that list and I'll continue. 
In verse 11 of chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians, it says, And all these things, that is what you used to be. But you were washed, you were sanctified, cleansed, made whole, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So we're looking at a new creation in light of all these offences and dreadful things. Because it sounds very harsh, and it is, because it's a warning. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived. Now you might say, well, if you break into somebody's house or you steal a car, it's classed as a criminal offence. And if you go to court, there could be a fixed charge for that offence. It could be a, a fine or a jail term, the same as speeding or whatever. And if you go through the list, a lot of these are um, offences in a court of law. And people argue, and this is very controversial, and I'm going to hit the, I'm going to drop the bomb now. Uh, but when it comes to the whole area of homosexuality, it has now been legalised. So what do you do in a situation where the Bible says it's wrong and it's a sin, but the law of the land and the ballot boxes and the voice of the, of the people and the nation have declared it not to be a sin? It, it's, it's fine. We, we can do this one. We can do this. But if we get drunk and if we rob people, um, we could go to jail. And yet all of these offences disqualify people from inheriting the kingdom of God. Have we been deceived? That's the big question. Okay. So, new life. Because all have sinned. Let's be dead honest here. We all fit into one of these categories. Who hasn't taken something? Who hasn't done? So in the Bible, they're all offences against God. And they are offences against the holiness of God. And God is a holy God. And we're not. Mind you, when we are born again, as the Bible says we ought to be, into, to come into the kingdom of God, and the only way we can see the kingdom of God is if we're born again, uh, then we begin, our eyes, the eyes of our heart begin to open, we begin to see God in a new way, in, as, as in a relationship of friendship, and that condemnation and dread is gone, because we've inherited the kingdom of God. And that can only be done, by the way, through repentance of sin, and by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ in humility, and asking him to save us. One John tells us that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we say that we have not sinned, so if we go through that list and says, and if we say, actually, oh, look, that's, that's just an old bad habit I have there. That's just a lifestyle. That's just an orientation. We're saying to God that we have not sinned. And we have no fellowship with him. His word has no place in our lives. So we must first of all own up to the fact that we have offended God. In not just this list, but in many more. We've all broken the commandments. So we have to say, look, whether a particular sin is legalised or not, it still disqualifies us from entrance into the kingdom of God. Big one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big one. So we need to say, look, Lord, I'm really struggling here. I need help. God's not going to condemn you. God's not going to throw you out if you come to him sincerely and say, I want to be this new creation, Lord. I want to be washed by the blood that was shed on Calvary. In my spirit, I want to be made clean. I want to be made whole. I want to be justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all here. If you want that, you come to the Lord and he will give it to you. He will not cast you away, but we must confess that we're doing something that is not honourable and holy to God as listed in his Bible. We must confess that it is a sin. Okay? So if we cover that sin, we're, we're, we're not being honest, and it will lead eventually to destruction. Destruction not only here, but for in this life, but for all eternity, we could be separated from God. So it's very important to take this very seriously and ask ourselves, have we been deceived? Just because somebody calls bad good, it doesn't mean it's good or right. We've been deceived just because somebody gets up in the in, in the government and says it's okay now we can all do this we can all have abortion it's okay we can do it there's circumstances that will permit that if it's wrong in god's sight it is wrong it will always be wrong and it will disqualify many from the kingdom of heaven 
Turn with me in Revelation, finally, as I round this up. And right down there, it says, and this is, again, amazing words. It says, blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. This is heaven, and this is what really is our destination as a believer. Behold, I am coming soon. I'm going to go back to verse 12 in Revelation 22. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside, outside the gates are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to, to give this testimony for the churches. And here's an invitation for you in closing today, my dear friend. In verse 17 of Revelation 22, it says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. Come and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the tree, the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, anything, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes any words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. This is a very, very solemn word, my dear friends, because he finally concludes with this word. Yes, I am coming soon. Friend, are you ready to meet with the Lord? Are your sins forgiven? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you owned up to your sin? Be it or not on that list that we read from Corinthians there. Come as you are. He will receive you. He will not turn away anyone who comes to him. Jesus said that. And when you come, nobody will snatch you from my hand. Dear friend, I'm going to leave you with a blessing that God will open the eyes of your heart today. And you will say, whatever this world calls, calls evil, uh, I am going to check it out. Whatever this world calls good, I'm going to check it out to see if it is good or evil. You are struggling with something. God's not going to punish you for that. He's going to say, come on, I can help you with this. I can help you get through it. I can help you get over it. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Nothing is too difficult for the Lord. His arm is not too short that it cannot save. You're not beyond redemption. But if you say, I have not sinned, that's where the problem lies, friend. Turn back to Jesus Christ today. Be born again and make sure your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life and that you're going to the holy city washed in the blood of the Lamb. Bless you, friend.